Right, this is lecture 11 on matrices and it's on uh, vector subspaces when they're applied and used. Uh, he also did a lot of proof on why the di dimension is the rank. So if you're asked to find the dimension of a, a load of matrices, then just uh, apply the Gaussian and find the rank. So just count how many non-zero lines there are. Right. Right, first of all, the method. Now, we're give, if, you're, if you're given an equation, such as x plus y plus z equals 4, and you're asked to um, find the equation for that equation in terms of matrices which spans, so you want to find a, a solution which will span all the re uh, real numbers in the third dimension, then this is the method you use. I have an example next if that didn't make much sense. Uh, first, you take your equation and you've guessed some values for x, y and z for which the uh, equation will work. So you're, And you'll give that in terms of a matrix. Uh, next, you have to let it equal zero. So any uh, va uh, values in it which do not have x, y, or z, or any other corresponding letter, let them all be zero, and then you have to s find two solutions for that. And then, finally, uh, and make sure they're linearly independent as well, make sure they're, they're not multiples of each other, because that would just be, well, it's kind of cheating, but it's, it uh, doesn't work properly. And your final equation, once we've finished, is going to be this, we have x, y, z as our matrix, because when something spans it equals every single point and we're going to have our v1 which is our very first uh, vector which works uh, plus a which is just a scalar times v2 which is the one where we've let it equal zero and that works plus v which is a scalar and v3 which is again just like v2 so I have a quick example, and examples always think, make things clearer. So uh, we have x plus 2y plus 3z equals 6. Now first we have to guess a solution. So if we want x, y, and z, we could guess 1, 1, 1, as we could have 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. So that works, and we have our uh, matrix there, and that works fine. Next, the next step was to let it equal zero, which we've done here, and then we need two solutions, and make sure they're linearly independent to each other. So here, I've used minus two, one, and zero, and minus three, zero, and one, and this, it's best to keep one of them zero, such as there, and then we have an opposite one over here, because then you know for sure that they're not linearly independent. So we've got a zero here, and then we've got one here, in order for this to be a zero out here, we'd have to times it by zero, and then that will all become zero, so it's definitely not linearly dependent. Right, now we've got our solutions, and next we need to do the general solution. So this is the final answer, and it's all quite simple, this. So we have x, y, z equals, I said v1, remember? So 1, 1, 1, plus a, which is the multiple, times r, first solution plus b times our second solution and that works pretty well and that's just what he did on the board he, and then he did another example which I, like I said before was just the dimension and the rank right now, now this is another example this was on the homework and a lot of people had trouble with this so I, I figured I'd go through this right now we have this the question said prove that they, that means the matrices, span R3, and is it a basis if it does span? So, we have our uh, vectors here, 1, 3, minus 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, sorry, 6, minus 5, 4, and 5, minus 7, 4. And then we transpose all these, that, that's what the T means, so we transpose them, it just saves space, and we'll just write them all down like that. So, in order to solve this, we have to first prove it spans. Now, the normal way to do this 
like I said in one of the other videos, was to uh, just do it algebraically. But we have a lot of these. So we're going to set it up as a Gaussian. Well, I'll just, I've got a little formula here. This is what we're trying to prove first, that it spans. So if you can remember, we want to times each of them. There should be an add between all these, actually. A plus, 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 plus. Uh, that we can multiply all these by something and it will equal x, y, z and a, b, c, d will all be in terms of x, y and z so we do this in a Gaussian so we have each of these as a different column of the Gaussian and this will be our augmented bit at the end over here so you'll end up with this now as a normal Gaussian, you just want to solve it. So you'll have the 1, 1, 1, and all the rest are zeros. And obviously, you can already tell that because we've got 4, and we want it in three dimensions, we will not need one of them. So after you've done the Gaussian, which takes forever, so um, you should be able to do a Gaussian. It's not that hard, really. It's just multiplying and adding. And on uh, Maple, there is actually a part of it which will actually solve Gaussian for you. If you go on um, Math Help uh, at the top and then you go to Tutors and then Linear Algebra and then Gaussian uh, Equation Solver thing and it will actually solve it for you, you can put in, input it all and it will show you the steps as well. <laughs> it's just a nice quick easy way but make sure you can do it before you do that because otherwise it's just a waste and you're only cheating yourself. Um, so we've applied this and, the, and you'll end up with this as your final answer. Now remember we're changing these as well as we're going along. Uh, this might be in a different order to yours when you solve it. I think, oh no that's fine, I was thinking of a different question, sorry. But as you can see it's gone down fine, we've ended up perfectly over here. And what this is actually telling us, back where you do the Gaussian you get X, Y, Z, maybe W. Here we have A, B, C and D. So we have, when a is 1, so we've got, well we've got a equals this, b equals this, c equals this, and also this column here, what it tells us, first of all, we don't actually need d, because we've already got 3, and one of them is bound to be a linear multiplication of another, because if you've got four lines, they can only go certain ways. Um, so what this, do, what this actually does tell you, it tells you what combination it is. So think of this as D. So we have D is minus 11 over 21 times A plus, oh sorry, minus 13 over 42 B plus 43 over 42 C. And this is actually the linear combination. So it actually proves that they are linearly uh, dependent, so one of the, uh, D can be put in terms of all the rest of them, so you don't actually need that one. So in this case, D will be zero, and you can also uh, check these after you've finished as well, if you've got time by guessing a value such as here we could put uh, one, two, three is usually my my first guess, and you can put these values in and then multiply out, and you will you will get the right things. Also with uh, these as well, you can test them as well. You can put them uh, here. You can multiply each of these by these. So we'd have minus 11 over 21a, minus 13 over 42b, and multiply them out, and you will get 5 minus 7, 4, just to prove that it is a linear combination and that it's linearly dependent. So that's how you solve a question like that.